Thank you. Please be seated. May the good Lord bless all of you. As we welcome the Holy Spirit, I pray that let the Holy Spirit touch us and speak to you. Hallelujah. Praise God for this opportunity. And this is, in fact, unexpected for me. And, but God is too good, and I am given a chance. And so I am so happy to stand before you and share the word of God. And I wish and I pray that let the word of the Lord be a blessing to you afresh today. Amen. Oh, by the way, English is not neither our mother tongue nor our father tongue. Moreover, it is not our first language nor second language, but maybe it is for our third or fourth language. But I'll try. God is there. Hallelujah. So humbly, I'm standing before you to speak in English and share the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, today I have chosen the Bible passage. It's a long passage, the gospel according to St. John, the gospel according to St. John chapter 11, John chapter 11, verses 22 to 43. It's very long. The gospel according to St. John chapter 11, verses 22 to 43. If you bring your Bible, you can continue reading. But for all of us, I will pick out a Bible passage that is verse 40. Verse 40, John 11, verse 40. Of course, we will be basing our preaching on verses 22 to 43. But here I read for all of us verse 40. Jesus said to her, did I not? Say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. I'm reading from the, the Bible verse of Gideon's. I repeat, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Basing on this, Bible passages, I have chosen the topic to see the glory of God in life. To see the glory of God in your life and in my life. Let me ask you the question. Do you get fed up of seeing the glory of God in others' life? We have been seeing the glory of God in others' life. And if you believe this is your time, that people will see the glory of God in your life. And there is the only key that is not working hard, that is not praying alone, that is not only studying very hard and have a high education, no, addition to that, the main key is just to believe that God is able. Hallelujah. To believe that everything is possible in God. How do you see yourself? When you compare with others, you feel very small, very weak. Yes, that is true. Knowing ourselves is a very good point to start in life. But don't look yourself, but look at the glory of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are incapable. We are nothing, but God is there. Hallelujah! We worship the God who is able. So, 
the topic is to see God's glory in life. Let others see God's glory in your life, in my life. Um, when you read the Bible, you may also know the context or the background of the passage. It is about the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. Uh, we, uh, I'll be preaching today uh, not a kind of expository or uh, textual, or it is more of a topical sermon. So, It is very challenging, of course, by faith, believing in Jesus, we get salvation, but to see the glory of God is for all, still then, not every being born again Christian does not enjoy this life. Of course, we are supposed to get this blessing, the physical blessing and the spiritual blessing, the physical bl salvation and the spiritual salvation, we are redeemed already. Still then, like a credit card, we have to use our faith it is not that we are going to earn, but it is there already. You have to open by your faith. Hallelujah. The money is already in your credit card. But unless and until you use, you will feel hungry, you will feel thirsty, you have the money, but you don't use it. After we have been born again, we have received the glory of God, and we are sons and daughters of the kings of kings. But today, many Christians, we are afraid of the, the life situation, the condition in which we are. Wow, what should I do with these problems? Wow, what will be my future? Wow, my friends are very good in their studies. Their parents can support in their education. But as for me, I can't. But God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why here we see about uh, the death and resurrection of Lazarus in chapter 11, 23, verses 23, 24, 25. 23, 24, 25. In 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. When Jesus came to the house of Mary and Martha, Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Likewise, today, Jesus said, you will get blessing. I will change your life. I will bless you. You will be never like before, Jesus said. Here, Mary and Martha respond in 24. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said he will rise now. But Martha believed that he will rise, but not now. Likewise, we believe Jesus. By God's grace, we get salvation. And everything is given to us. The life of prosperity is for us. Hallelujah. Because we have a God who cares for us. Who loves us so much. Hallelujah. Let's give him a big hand. Do you think that when God sees you, 
he will be just satisfied by seeing your life. Never, never, I believe. Because he cares for us. That's why he has given his only begotten son. So, not only the spiritual salvation, but the physical salvation, the blessing, all kinds of blessing. Hallelujah. He wants to give, not after, but right now. Hallelujah. You may not have money, you may not have a good brain, or you are not good in your studies. You are not so brilliant in your studies. You may not have a good daughter or son, but believe that Jesus can change his whole life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is one we see about belief. Um, belief, the word belief and faith uh, can be used interchangeably. It's, uh, it can be used alternatively. The word belief and faith. Uh, when we see about, uh, uh, when we read the Bible, we can see in the Bible two kinds of faith. Two kinds of faith. One is saving faith, and the second one is living faith. One is saving faith, and the second one is living faith. That can be seen in the systematic theology from page 600 to 611, or uh, 12 pages. Well, it is written and explained in more than 10 pages, carefully. So, there are two kinds of faith, and saving faith and living faith. Hallelujah. In other words, saving belief all, saving belief and living belief. Belief and faith can be used alternatively. So, in order to become the children of God, it is needed. The saving faith is needed. So today what we are discussing is not the first one, but the second one. To whom Jesus is speaking? Jesus spoke to the people, Mary and Martha, who had already a good relationship with them. No doubt, we have been born again Christian. We are children of God. That is the first step of saving faith. Like Mary and Martha, we have a good relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But still then, to see the glory of God, there is another faith. That is, we have to lift out according to what we believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the, the heart. Oh, Mary and Martha, they know Jesus. Jesus heals the dead body, the sick people. Miracles are performed. Still then, they cannot take for them. They thought it was only for others. But Jesus said, your brothers will rise again. Jesus said, today it is for you. Hallelujah. So likewise today, the power of God is not only for others. It is for me and it is for you also. Hallelujah. Let this my break hand. Hallelujah. Friends, today, may God help you to be able to have a very big faith or to be able to believe so that miracle will take place. Because our God is alive. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac is the God of ours. Hallelujah. Here we can see chapter 11, verse 24.
4. Mary and Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, not at the last day, but today. Jesus is also coming to our life today. It is possible in every moment. In verse, uh, verse uh, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He will believe. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Um, let me ask, how do we believe Jesus? Sometimes we need to pray to increase the way we believe our Lord. I believe the grace of God is sufficient for us if we ask. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we can increase our faith. The time will come we will be able to believe. But if you are eager to see God's glory in your life, I don't think we want to see the glory of God in others' life. But, friends, I would like to invite you today. Let others see the glory of God in our life by now. That's possible. That's our opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take it for you. It's for us. Because Jesus has paid the price. But we, have, we need to open with the key of believing in Jesus. That's not a kind of, of belief that is to get salvation. But to see the glory of God in our life. Not only to get our needs, not only to live as we like, but to live a life that can reflect the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that people will see his, the glory of God and the world will be attracted by the glory of God. Um, let's see. Verse 35. Here we can see when Martha believed that his, uh, her brother will rise again after, uh, after, uh, at the last day, Jesus, in, in verse 35, we can see Jesus wept. Some people say this is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Why did Jesus wept? The people around believe that, whoa, see how Jesus loved so much Lazarus. But Jesus did, did not weep because of loving Lazarus. But Jesus wept because Mary and Martha cannot believe. They thought Jesus could not do that. Today, is Jesus is weeping because of you and me. By the way, we believe. I hope you get my point. Because of Mary and Martha, Jesus wept. Because they could not believe that Jesus could do that. Friends, today also, who knows? 
because of many of the children of God, Jesus is still weeping sometime. Because we have been born again. We have got the blessing from God. We have been worshiping, dancing, and shouting. And we believe that that God cannot do our problems. Are you still in that position? May the Lord help you. Hallelujah. To see God's glory in your life and in my life. Because He can do everything. Though it is for all the children of God, but all the children, all the children of God do not enjoy this because the only, the only reason is that many people cannot believe it. Here also we see um, because Lazarus died, it has been four days. He had been buried in the cemetery. But Jesus here, I, I, I want to say, Jesus came to Lazarus after four days. Here is the reason. Because the Jews people, they have... Uh, the, traditionally, they believe that uh, when a person died, up to three days, they just keep in the house because the spirit can come and re-enter into the dead body and rise again. That's their traditional belief. That's why when the person died till three days, that is really he also is dying. So they buried. So when Jesus came before four days, the Jew people may think that when Lazarus rise up again, the, the, the people may think that it is not the work of Jesus. It is the Spirit himself re enter into the dead body. So Jesus came after the four days because Jesus would like to remove all the traditional belief. Today, Jesus is still alive. His word is alive. His word is powerful. Hallelujah. Today, God would like to remove your traditional belief. Do I am here in America? No. I'm not like other people. Because people are, their parents are educated, but my parents are. Their salary are very good, but our family is from our forefathers. We are uneducated, uneducated. Amen. God would like to remove that traditional belief because He would like to bless you a new life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God also wants to see His glory in your life. His glory in my life. That's why He died for us. He paid the price. Hallelujah. It's for every one of us, but only those who believe. So after four days, Jesus came. Uh, here Jesus said in verse 39, in verse 39, Jesus said, um, In verse 39, Jesus said, um, uh, be, before verse 39, Jesus said, where, where do you, oh, uh, no, mm, where, um, okay, okay, up to that, uh, verse 40. Verse 39, 
Yeah, verse 34, 34. Jesus said, and he said, where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? When Jesus asked, where have you laid the dead body? Jesus did not ask the condition, the situation, but where it is. Hallelujah. Jesus today also, Jesus did not ask the seriousness of our problem. But Jesus asked, what is your problem? Jesus did not ask today the condition of our life, the condition of our problem. But Jesus asked, what do you want? Mary and Martha, they said, no, Lord, it has been four days. It might, it might have been smelly and odors, and we, they, they care even for Jesus to go to the cemetery because it has been rotten. But Jesus said, where is the rotten body? Hallelujah. Today, Jesus asks, what is your problem? Because he went to do miracles in our life. He went to solve all our problems. What is your problems? When we share to people, people will not listen to us. But Jesus asked, my son, my daughter, what is your problem today? You and I may say that, Lord, my problem is this and that, but I don't think it will be okay. Do I pray to you, Lord? But the Lord Jesus say, even today, what is your problem? Not the condition, but you just tell to Jesus what you want to be in your life, what you wish to get. What kind of blessing you want to get? Amen. In verse 40, Jesus said, as we have said before, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And chapter uh, verse 43, Now then he said, he had said this thing, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out from the tomb. Friends, today, it is the same God that people believe. Why don't we get his blessing? His glory, His blessings is also for us and also for you. The situation may be very hopeless, but the in that situation, the glory of God will be shine. Hallelujah. From that hopeless condition, God's glory will be seen by others. And people will praise our God. That's the final aim of our God. That's why Jesus came down. He was beaten up. He carried the cross. He died on the cross. Not only for redeeming our spirit, but also He cares for our body. Do you want to see God's glory in your life also? Or are you just satisfied by seeing the glory of God in others' life? Wow, that car, very good. Wow, this building. Wow, their sons and daughters are educated. Wow, their family have been born again. Wow, this family very rich. Friends, 
I get fed up of saying that. I wish that people may see the glory of God in my life. Amen. To see the glory of God in your life, that is God's aim and purpose. But Satan may say, no, that's not for you. No, you will not get blessing because you cannot pray. No, you will not get blessing because you don't have, uh, you, you don't give the tithe and offering. No, you will not get blessing because you, know, you don't read the Bible, this and that. But that's not the condition. The condition is if I believe. Hallelujah. If you believe the unworthy people, the unlovely people are loved by God. Hallelujah. So all these blessings are also by His grace alone. We should not earn. It is earned by Jesus by paying His life already. So how do we get those blessings? Just by believing in Jesus. That my life and your life and your life can be seen by others. They will see the goodness, the goodness of God. Wow, God's children are like that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. On that day, unexpected thing can, can take place. Unexpected thing, unexpected things will take place. People will say, "How come these people? They were very poor. Their, their parents are uneducated. How can this blessing be theirs?" Whoa, whoa! Let's give him a big, a big hand. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That's why the grace of God is sufficient for me also, even for you, even for me. The word E V E and even it carries a big meaning. Hallelujah! The grace of God is sufficient for sufficient for even you, sufficient for even me. The man who cannot pray, the man who do not read. Properly, the Bible. The man who, the people who don't go to the church regularly, whatever situation it may be, whatever problems you may have, it does not depend on the condition. It does not depend on the way you live. It depends on the grace of God. Hallelujah! 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 It depends on the grace of God only. If you believe that grace is sufficient for you, if even for our physical and for our spiritual life, Hallelujah! That grace is sufficient for a person like me. That grace is sufficient for a person like you. That's why we sang "Amazing Grace, Wonderful Grace." Hallelujah, unexpected grace, undeserved grace. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Friends, today, God is challenging you. If you believe, have I not told you, if you believe, you would see the glory of God. May the good Lord bless through the message and the word of God to see the glory of God in our life. There is the only key that is just to believe that God God's grace is even sufficient for me. God's grace is sufficient for even you. Not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big hand. It's because of what Jesus did. It's because of what you did today. 
It's because of what you have done before God. It's because of what Jesus has done according to his Father's will. That's why the unloved people are loved now. So, unexpected things can happen in your life. Miracles can take even in my life and even in your life because we believe and we worship that kind of God because His love is unmeasurable. His grace is amazing, wonderful, and even sufficient for all of us. Shall we all stand together and sing a song? May I call the worship team? And as we have first the message and as we have heard the word of God, shall we dedicate our life? If you believe today, miracle will take place. Hallelujah. Our faith, our belief need to be increased. We should be closer to God. Hallelujah. So that many people will see the glory of God, the miracles of God in your life. Things will take place. People will see, whoa, God's people are like this. Hallelujah. 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 Because when you and I believe, God, God cannot keep silent. God cannot keep silent because He is a good God. He loves us. He kills us. Let's give Him a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, here, Psalm number 48 Test and see the goodness of God. There is another opportunity. If you want to test God, we are allowed. Amen. We are allowed. Let's see. Let's believe. Let's test the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a song and pray together. You deserve the glory and the honor as we let's close our eyes. condition. Lord, it does not depend on the way we live. It depends on the goodness of God.
we give you thanks, O oh God, because we have such a great God. We have just such a loving God Amen. who cares for us, who loves us so much, who has amazing grace. Your grace is sufficient for us, for all our problems of life. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the faith. May you help us to be able to believe you, to see your glory even in our life. Father God, we give you thanks for your presence in our midst. Thank you so much for speaking to us. May you help us to be able to put our faith in you Amen. so that we will see your glory in our life and people will also see your glory in our life and your name will only be glorified on this earth I pray to all for all the people May you solve all the problems. May you give us the strength to be able to believe. A kind of faith that can take place in our life. That can shake the power of God. That can pull out the power of God. Thank you for your presence. From the beginning to till the end, Holy Spirit, we give you all the glory and honor. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.